Kia ora, hello, I'm Philip Duncan. Thanks very much for joining us for our Monday weather update. And it's the final Monday of summer this year. In fact, the final day of summer uh, for this season. Of course, that's on the meteorological calendar. If you go with the astronomical calendar, you've got another three more weeks to go of summer. I don't really mind which one you pick. It makes no difference to me. But uh, there are two different dates, that's for sure. Or there's actually three. There's also the one that Mother Nature does, you know, whenever the weather starts to change. So at the moment, there is definitely a cooler change around a big portion of New Zealand, except for the very top. It is still very warm in northern New Zealand, with overnight lows still in the mid to late teens for some of you. But the main feature on the map today are the two tropical storms going on. Cyclone Anika, which has fallen apart quite a bit over here in Western Australia, but is not finished yet, could come back to life. And then we've got another storm up here forming near New Caledonia, and this one is likely to come in towards the New Zealand area, but that is also not 100% locked in. So let's try and make sense of all of that with the week ahead. Here's how we look on Tuesday. So we've got the low pressure zone deepening here right over the top of New Caledonia. It's a little bit windy in Vanuatu and very wet. There could be around 100 millimetres of rain falling, but uh, that shouldn't be too problematic for you. And then on the other side here, over in Australia, right near Broome, a tropical depression, we think by tomorrow, and this was a Nika, or still is a Nika, and it's likely to track along the coastline, so that's where there's a lot of rain falling, could be some flooding in that area, and then it moves out to sea. And that's where it could explode back into life in the next couple of days. The Bureau of Meteorology saying it could become a severe Category 3 storm just briefly before it comes back in and makes landfall once again in Western Australia. And then it moves into the desert. So that is Tuesday. Here's Wednesday. Now I've got two maps for Wednesday because I want to show you the two different computer models that we trust. Here is the American modeling showing a tropical cyclone forming here briefly as it drops southwards briefly because it is exiting the tropics. But on Wednesday, that's the storm not really impacting land, so it's an out at sea storm on Wednesday. Over here in Australia, there is a Nika, which is likely to be deepening again as it just tracks away from Broome and heads, at, heads back out over water. Meanwhile, more rain comes down away from Brisbane. That's the good news. It leaves Queensland with those deadly floods from the past few days. But now we see heavy rain moving into Sydney, so that could also be problematic. But the reason why I wanted to show you two maps for Wednesday is to do with this system. So this is the GFS map. Let's go to the European one now and it's quite different, shows the low in a similar area, but instead of being one single low pressure zone, it joins up with those other lows out around Sydney and drives in a tropical rainmaker for you. So that could be quite a problematic setup. Either way, the modeling's a bit conflicted about where this storm's going to go. But when we go to the Europe, uh, back to the American model, GFS, this is Thursday's setup, and it shows it pulling away from the tropics. So there is some uncertainty. Now the IBM uh, computer we use here at WeatherWatch, Watson, that is crunching all the numbers and it certainly does suggest that the top of New Zealand gets windy easterlies on Thursday because of that storm tracking down close towards us. So at this stage we're leaning towards the GFS modeling being more accurate. But look at the high over New Zealand, strong and powerful, there is not a lot going on. Temperatures will start to lift up after the cold start you've had in the, at the uh, start of this week. And look at the rain coming into Sydney and south of Sydney could be 100 more millimetres falling there on Thursday. And up here, there's Anika making landfall again, potentially now as a severe Category 3 storm. So that's quite a lot going on on Thursday. Now as we get to Friday, the storm over here, Anika falls apart over the desert. So some much needed rain falling in a number of places there. But rain is not welcome back here in Queensland. Unfortunately, there is a small area of low pressure that returns for you on Friday, bringing in some wet weather for you. And again, those easterlies and rain continues all the way down towards Victoria. And New Zealand stays mostly dry this week, really does, with high pressure and charge. But that storm or cyclone, if it does come in closer, the winds will pick up for the top of New Zealand with gale force easterlies possible around Thursday and Friday, and maybe even into Saturday as well. And Saturday, our final map here shows this storm falling apart, 
but it could be driving in dangerous beach conditions. I can hear the surfers going, okay, uh, dangerous is a word that they kind of like, but um, we don't recommend that, of course, we've got to say all that stuff. Uh, and then over here in Australia, the rain comes down and plenty of it now moving more in towards Melbourne and Tasmania, but still hasn't finished up here around Queensland. So a very busy week, typical La Nina going on with these rainmakers up here and the wet weather around eastern Australia. Our next video update will be out on Tuesday and also our next Climate Watch update for the month of March will be out tomorrow as well. We'll see you then.